Number 82. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, it's like the 19th problem or something. Okay. All right, so this has got, let's use you. So first off, it doesn't really do anything below zero. This one doesn't. It's this straight line from zero, so one. It's this straight line from one to two. And then it dies again, <laughs> greater than two. So you should be able to graph this pretty easy. It's nice straight lines in there. All right. And the integral of a function, what does it mean? What is the integral? Sort of like if I say, what's the derivative for a function mean? You know it's slope. Integral means antiderivative, which now we know is connected to the area. area. I like it. Um, so if it's asking me to find, and actually this one just says, yeah. This one says, find this area. There it is, it's your x. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Find an expression for g of x similar to the one for f of x. Is this where we finally do? Oh, this is where we finally do, yay. Oh, okay, okay, all right. We didn't finish 5.3 yet. So we haven't officially made this connection yet. Yeah, okay. We didn't get to F talk two really yet. If you weren't here last time, you're like, what the shit's F talk? But we did F talk one. I don't think I officially did F talk two yet. And that's what you need for this. All right. Let's put this. So after we do F talk two, this is going to be relatively easy, believe it or not. Okay. I like it. So let's put that on the back burner. We'll come back to this after I do F talk two, and I'll remind me to. If, if it makes sense now what to do with this. After we... I did 5.2 already, too, and it was still confusing, but that's fine. Oh, wait. No, no, no. 5.2, I don't care. 5.3 has got a brand new thing. We haven't talked about it officially yet. That will make this problem very simple. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, it, it's sort of like... Do you guys... Uh, well, this is... I don't like asking this question, but do you enjoy doing this process? Uh, has, has anybody actually done this yet for a problem? I'm sure some of you guys have. Some of you guys are like, I'm just not going to do it and hope he doesn't notice. But this is so desperately important to be able to do this, to make the connections we need to make. And it's just like when we did limit definition of derivative, because that's the heart of the idea. Today we're going to finish finally making the connection between antiderivatives, which are really kind of easy to get for most functions. They're just the opposite of derivatives, and, antiderivatives. Um, and make that connection between them and um, this idea of area. So instead of doing this long ass process where you got this funky ass stuff, right? The sum of i, the sum of i squared, and the sum of i cubed. Instead of doing that huge process, we, we're going to try to develop some connections to make a shortcut. Just like we did with limit definition of derivative, we noticed some things, we started to try to make some shortcuts. And now we don't really need the limit definition unless we hit a function we don't know yet. Then we have to go back to it. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. Okay. So, sorry, Shan, I'm not going to answer that yet. It'll depend on today's lecture. Any, anything else from homework stuff? Okay, so. Let's do this. Um, I've got a little, basically, a, it's almost like a practice quiz, to be honest. A little practice sheet of stuff. I want you guys to work on this for a little bit, and then we'll do it together. Uh, let me see. Let's do this, just in case I have a feeling a couple people weren't here. Using this guy. Let's do one example of how to build this guy up. Because I'm asking you that question on this little practice thing. So you see how it works. And some of us who were here remember how the hell it works. 
So if I, if I give you a function, oh, let's make it something not too evil. Um, sure. Right, and I ask you to find the area under f of x, you know, when I say under, between f of x and the x-axis, uh, from negative 1 to 1, so find the exact area, let me say it like that. So that's why I don't have to tell you how many rectangles you use, because of course we're going to use infinite rectangles, because we're insane. Like, why not? What's the very first thing I want to calculate? And it's on that, I try to really make it nice, uh, the little recipe of what to do. And it kind of, if you look at the form of what you're working with, it makes sense what the steps are. What do I have to figure out first? What do, well, which piece do I have to figure out first? And which is the easiest piece to figure out, to be honest? Delta X. Delta X. Yeah, the width is always the easiest little dude. What's the width going to be for this one? Two over n. Over n. I like it. So it kind of makes sense. I've got to cover a width, an area, uh, like a, a region too wide, and I'm going to use n rectangles. I'm eventually going to let it go to infinity. So how wide does each rectangle have to be? It's two divided by n. I like it. Now what can I build off of that? How do I build this guy up? To get f of x, I, of course, need this guy first. And I, I, if you have this drawn, can anybody tell me anything about this guy? What the picture would look like? A anything. Yeah, it's a down parabola. I like it. And uh, the y intercept is going to be 2. And at negative 1, it's 1. At 1, it's 1. So this is the region we're talking about. So I want this area here. The area under that umbrella, right? So I mean, that's the little thing you do for yourself is sketch a really rough sketch. Maybe I don't shade it so you got some stuff you can put in here. Um, so how do I find x i? To find the x I'm using, where do I always Start. Where's the beginning point for me on this? Negative one. And how do I get to the next? How do I get to the first thing I'm going to use? How far do I go from negative one to get to the this side of this first rectangle? Delta, Delta x form this. So I go. So what's x i going to be? It's going to be negative one plus delta x times i. Because to get to the i rectangle, I've got to take i steps. You have got to let that make complete physical sense. I know it's a little scary when math makes physical sense, but that almost always happens, believe it or not. And, of course, we know what delta x is. What's delta x? It's this guy. So that's an expression for the this side of the rectangle, each rectangle. So if I multiply uh, the height, which is the function evaluated here, by the width, I get each area. So I can see how this kind of builds up. So now I figured out delta x. I've got to do this first, not just because it's the easiest, dude, but because xi depends on it. I figure out what this is. Now I can figure out what this is and finally just throw everything together. This is kind of a construction. This is to construct all the parts you need and then put them all together. It's a beautiful idea. So what does f of xi look like? What does mine look like? Sweet. f of xi is just going to be 2 minus that thing. You guys, is that cool? So, there's in mathematics, there's always this level of we created this from a very unbelievably basic idea. 
of areas of rectangles. I have so many of them. And then the final layer we put on was, let's have infinite resolution. So we know that it comes from a solid foundation that makes sense. So now it becomes a problem of just give it what it needs. It needs this. Okay. It needs this. Okay. It needs what this shit is. Okay. Right? To put it into the idea because we know the idea is right. So now how his look is going to be limit and goes to infinity. Some i equals one in. F of x i is right here. Times delta x, which was 2 over. And then for this problem, I would let you just stop there. If I just say write the form, you don't have to actually evaluate it. When you do section 5.2 homework, you do have to evaluate it. And that's why you have to know what sum of i is, sum of i squared, sum of i cubed. All right, so let's do this. Let, let's do this sheet. Let me remember what I... Gosh, I got one eyeball. If the other one gets blurry, it's all sucky. There we go. Um, let's do this sheet, and then I think we'll... When you get done with the sheet, we'll come back, and we'll actually finish the expression you get. We'll actually do it. So you can see another complete worked-out problem. This is basically going to be what the quiz looks like. Thursday.